Thank you for submitting your answers to the Oxford Knee Score. As promised, we'll now try to give you all the essential information that you may need to help you decide whether or not knee replacement surgery is right for you. We'll be explaining what a knee replacement is, who should have one, and what are the expected outcomes. We will answer questions such as, will I be pain free? Will I be able to walk normally? What will and won't I be able to do? Will it bother me at night? Will I be able to climb stairs without holding on? Will I be able to kneel? How long will it take me to be off my crutches? When can I expect to be functioning normally again? Will it feel like a normal knee? Can I get back to sport? And what kind of sport will I be able to participate in? The first thing I would like to do is talk about how successful is a knee replacement and what can I expect in terms of my overall result. I'd like to refer patients to this happiness curve. So we have three very distinct groups following knee replacement surgery. We have the very happy patients who feel little or no pain. The knee feels normal or nearly normal. Approximately 10% of all patients are in this group. The next and biggest group of patients are glad they had the surgery, they'd recommend it to a friend and they would have the surgery again. This accounts for approximately 80% of people undergoing a knee replacement. They may not feel perfectly normal because the knee clicks a bit. It swells a bit and feels a little stiff. They find it a struggle to bend fully and kneel. They may not be able to play their sports and be as active as they were prior to the surgery. The really important thing in this majority group is their pain has dropped considerably from 8, 9, 10 out of 10 to where they can't sleep at night or function or even walk short distances to a pain level which is maybe 2 or 3 out of 10. They still have some slight discomfort, but it's significantly better than it was prior to the surgery. Their knee used to keep them awake, but after surgery they can sleep through the night, and they can walk, climb stairs and function well. And then we have the third group consisting of between 10 and 15% of patients who are worse off than they were prior to the surgery. They may have had a complication such as an infection, which is a 2 to 4% risk. They may have had a blood clot in the calf or the lungs, and there may have been an anaesthetic complication. There may be a technical issue in 2% of patients in the way the knee replacement components are put in and aligned. Further surgery may be needed in these cases. This still leaves 10% of people who have the surgery and are worse off than before they started. They have pain and they don't like the feel of their new knee. So it is important when deciding to proceed to knee replacement that your pain is bad enough that you would take a 10% risk of being worse off following the surgery. For example, you can't walk anywhere beyond very short distances. You're constantly in discomfort. You're having to use a stick to get around. Obviously, this is a great operation for you. And we do perhaps 100,000 knee replacements in the UK and millions worldwide each year for patients as this operation is very successful for patients who are significantly functionally limited by their pain. Now I just want to finish off by talking about hip replacement, which is completely different and you can't compare the two. With the hip replacement, the success rate with patients who are absolutely delighted goes from 10%, which is what we see with knee replacement patients, to as high as 90%. This is because replacing a hip is a much more straightforward thing to do in terms of the geometry of the joint. It's a simple ball and socket and replacing it really does reproduce totally normal function in the vast majority of patients. And that's why it has such a high quality of life improvement. But for knee replacement surgery, it's different. The knee is a very complex joint. It is a hinge joint, but also has to rotate. It's a very superficial joint, much closer to the surface of the body, and it does not behave in the same way as a replaced hip does. So I'd like to focus now on a few of the outcomes we can talk about following knee replacement surgery. How will I improve and how will I change? Let's talk about the pain first, because that's the single most important reason for undergoing a total knee replacement. As your joint becomes arthritic, you have significant joint surface damage. This joint surface erodes and the bone starts to grind into the bone on the other side of the joint. This can obviously cause a lot of pain, which limits the ability of the patient to walk, to climb in and out of a chair or a flight of stairs, to sleep at night, or to do anything particularly physically demanding. The best way we can measure that is by asking patients to quantify the pain. And although it is a subjective question, please be as objective as you can. We use what we call visual analog scale. The score ranges from 0 to 10. 10 is the worst pain you can imagine and 0 is no pain at all. 
Now, if your pain is 8, 9 or 10 out of 10, and it's there most of the time, then it may well be, if you have an arthritic knee, you should be thinking about knee replacement surgery. If, however, your knee is bothering you, it troubles you but it's manageable, you can still play nine holes of golf and you're reasonably happy with that. You can go for a walk and it just aches a bit afterwards, or you can go up and down stairs relatively normally, perhaps a little bit slower. The pain score is probably five or six out of 10. Remember, for the vast majority of patients having knee replacement, there's a significant improvement in the pain, but it is more likely that you will have some discomfort afterwards, perhaps down to a score of two to three out of 10 after surgery. The risks of complications of knee replacement surgery or of being in the 10% not happy group are probably not worth it for a few points gain in your score. Knee replacement really needs to be considered only when the pain is severe, interfering with your life on a very regular and constant basis. So then, what can we do with that pain and what are the alternatives to knee replacement surgery? Before you embark on a major operation, of course you should try pain relief. Far too often we hear people saying, I don't like taking painkillers, I'm just not a pill taker. These tablets are sophisticated and they're there to relieve pain. They're safe and you may be able to get by with some basic pain medication. Maybe you haven't tried painkillers on a regular basis. Adopting simple measures such as taking regular painkillers, for example paracetamol, possibly with some codeine and anti-inflammatory tablets if you can take them, may allow you to function and sleep. You need to have a discussion with your GP about what painkillers are available. There are lots of very complicated and sophisticated drugs now that you can take both during the day and at night to try and help manage your pain. What about other tablets? There are certain tablets that are worth considering, for example glucosamine, as there is some evidence that it helps in a proportion of patients. Try taking the tablets for a minimum of six weeks. If you're seeing a significant benefit in your symptoms, then of course you continue to take these tablets. If, however, you see no reduction in your pain, then it's not worth continuing. What about using a stick? By using a stick away from the effective side, so if you have an arthritic right knee, you hold the stick in your left hand, it offloads the joint and can provide significant pain relief. What about losing weight? Although this is very difficult, it definitely helps you to reduce your pain. The heavier we are, the more we're going to load our knee joints, and therefore part of the reason why you've got a problem with your knee is maybe you're a little overweight. It's very important that you work out ways to try and reduce your weight if this is the case. This will help reduce your pain, and also if you're considering a knee replacement surgery, it makes it much safer and makes the new knee replacement last a lot longer. This is something that is very difficult for you to discuss in a short consultation, whether with your GP or with your orthopaedic surgeon, but it's definitely worth doing. What about injections? There are several things that we can inject into your knee. The first is steroid. This can be very effective in relieving acute flare-up of pain. It tends to last an average of between 8 and 12 weeks, then the pain comes back. If you are in very poor health, this may be all we can offer you. And we may keep you ticking over with regular injections every three or four months, and we can safely do this three or four times a year. However, this is not something we would like to do on a regular basis for someone who is young and active. If you've reached the point where you've tried a steroid injection and it hasn't really helped, or only worked for a short period of time, we probably wouldn't repeat it again. But it is certainly something worth considering before you have a knee replacement. There are newer, unproven injections, like hyaluronic acid, which is used to lubricate the joint. Perhaps one or two of these injections before we consider a knee replacement. These help in some patients with early or moderate arthritis. Other new injections like platelet-rich plasma, where we take your blood, take away the blood cells and leave the plasma. There is early evidence that injecting this platelet-rich plasma into the joint can relieve symptoms. There are alternative procedures to a total knee replacement that you may be suitable for if only part of your joint is damaged. One is an osteotomy, where we realign the knee in the younger active patients. This offloads the damaged area and loads the good area of the knee. We may find that your knee is suitable for a partial knee replacement, and these certainly behave in a much more physiological, i.e. a more natural way, than total knee replacements. Again, this is something that your surgeon will discuss with you. If your pain is manageable, or you'd like to look at other options than surgery, or if you haven't tried pain relieving tablets, you must go down this route first. Think about a steroid injection. This is something that you should certainly consider prior to having a knee replacement. You can discuss this with your GP, or we'd be delighted to do this for you at the hospital. How quickly will I get over surgery? In terms of getting over the procedure, the first few weeks are quite uncomfortable. 
After your surgery, the knee is covered in bandages, which are taken down the very next day. We get you up and going with the physios very quickly, and you're not allowed to leave the hospital until you're safe. This means you can walk with your crutches and go up and down a flight of stairs, and you can manage to get to the toilet independently. So people can really be quite independent quite quickly with modern enhanced recovery techniques. We've been able to get patients up and out of hospital three to four days after their surgery, and some within one to two days. Once you're at home, there is a fair amount of discomfort, but this is well managed with the pain relief you will be given by your doctors. You take this pain relief during the day and at night to help you sleep. By the sixth week, the exercises you have been doing will have made the knee strong enough for you to begin to really enjoy your new knee joint. And you'll be able to get out, start driving and start thinking about being more active, going to the shops and living life in a normal fashion. By three months, the knee is really beginning to settle down. However, in some people it takes longer and you have to give it six months. And in fact, the knee replacement can continue to improve slowly for up to 12 months after surgery. If I have knee replacement surgery, how will I function afterwards? With stairs. Once you've had your knee replacement, you may be able to go up and down stairs completely normally, but it's likely you'll just feel a little unsteady and it'll want to hold on a bit as you're going up and down. With walking, if you have a knee replacement, you'd like to have normal function. And as I've previously mentioned, it's unlikely that the new knee will feel completely normal. Most people have a limit to which they're comfortable walking following a knee replacement. We would hope that you'll be able to walk around a golf course and most people can do that or an equivalent distance. Some people can manage 20 to 30 minutes, but they still need to take a break because their knee is aching following a knee replacement. Will it feel like a normal knee? When we carry out the knee replacement procedure, most of the time we have to remove a lot of the soft tissue structures which are important for the knee to behave normally. In most, the knee feels and behaves differently with the artificial joint as opposed to the native joint. We're doing our best at the moment to try and come up with new techniques and implants for doing knee replacement surgery to help make your knee feel normal and about 10% of patients do feel like they have a normal pain-free knee. The majority have some residual pain, stiffness or clicking. This clicking is completely normal in most patients. Will I be able to move it like before? Most people now can fully straighten their knee and they can bend their knee up behind them to a great extent with modern implants. But one of the main determinations of how well the knee will move after surgery is how well your knee moves before surgery. A lot of patients have the sensation that their knee is going to let them down and give way before they have the procedure. Their knee feels very unstable and that's because it hurts and those pain signals switch off the muscles around the knee as a safety measure. The brain is saying there's something wrong and the knee feels or does indeed give way. Following the knee replacement surgery, your knee is likely to feel much more stable, but in some it may still feel slightly unsteady. Can I exercise or play golf? We consider a knee replacement success when a golfer can get around a golf course. If you don't play, it still gives you an idea of what level of activity we expect. Most will not be able to play sport. In a small minority after knee replacement, the knee feels so normal that they do want to venture out and play racket sports like social tennis and do normal activities. But the knee replacement is not really designed for those sorts of activities and the jarring and impact are really to be avoided. In the gym, you may be able to use a cross trainer or a rowing machine and an exercise bike. You can certainly swim, but breaststroke may be uncomfortable. Equally, going skiing gently for a week or two may be possible in some following knee replacement. You most certainly shouldn't run on your knee replacement, as this may cause early wearing out of the new joint. We see a much higher failure rate in this group as opposed to more sedentary patients. Am I too old or too young? There is no right age to have knee replacement. If the knee replacement wears out, of course you can have a second replacement. In fact, you can even have a third or a fourth. Each time we do the surgery, it becomes more difficult and the results are less good. So you want your knee replacement to last you, hopefully forever. Unlike hip replacements, if it's done in a sedentary individual, it may well last forever. For anyone under the age of 50, it's only in exceptional circumstances that we would even consider a total knee replacement. Should I come to see a surgeon? When you come to see us, it's likely that your x-ray will show arthritis. Your GP will be referring you up to the hospital to discuss the possibilities of a knee replacement with a surgeon. You'll be with us for up 15 to 20 minutes. You really need to consider whether it's time for you to be referred up to have that chat. You do need to do some research, look at this resource, and look at other resources on the internet to work out whether a knee replacement is a good option for you. I've touched so far on what you could expect to do. Don't expect a normal knee. 
don't expect complete pain relief. It may be that that's how it feels, but the vast majority of patients continue to have some discomfort and the knee just doesn't feel quite, as they put it, normal or right. So you really have to manage your expectations and you have to get an understanding of what a knee replacement is likely to give you. Then you're much more likely to be in that happy patient group. Finally, we'd like to thank you for taking part in this programme and we hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments on how it might be improved, we'd be grateful for your feedback. Your information will help us develop this program such that it becomes a better resource for patients in the future. Here at Ashford and St Peter's Hospital, we have a number of surgeons regularly performing knee replacements. Their details can be found on the Trust website. Mm -hmm.